Hi everybody. Um, it is time to cover our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and try to understand why these guys are so famous um, as Renaissance artists. So they became a cartoon, but they are just a few of the famous um, artists of this time period that began in Italy that we'll talk about four of the, the giants there of this art movement. And the first to talk about is going to be Donatello. He, let's see if I can, I'm not getting everything in that I want to, ah. Okay, so I had to pause and now I'm back. Um, so there may have been some strange pause there and now I'm making it worse. Um, Donatello is the first of these when we're talking about these turtles in chronological order. Um, he lives for 80 years, and again, all of the, these four uh, guys are Italian giants, so he is known for being a sculptor. Now, this messes people up a lot of times, but it is a, a sculpt. A sculptor sculpts sculptures, so he is not a sculpture. A sculpture with this spelling over here on the left is a um, the actual work of art itself. He is a sculptor. A sculptor is the person who makes the sculptures, um, who sculpts them. That would be the verb. So he is a sculptor who sculpts sculptures. And one of his most famous works is David here. Now, there are all kinds of things about why David looks somewhat like a girl here. But this is the biblical account of David in the Old Testament when this future king of Israel was a boy and killed um, Goliath. Hit Goliath with his slingshot and then later cut off Goliath's head. So you see David here standing over the head of Goliath. David triumphant over Goliath. And this is a key sculpture for a number of reasons, just like today, we still have the David versus Goliath stories today, the underdog um, of David taking on the mighty giant of Goliath. And those stories were just as common at this point in the Renaissance with David and Goliath being an important biblical account. Um, but this is a key sculpture for a number of reasons. It's the first... Um, The first nude bronze since antiquity. So not the first statue since antiquity, but um, or I should, it, it, it's the first, um, actually I'm going to edit this a little bit, sorry. First freestanding nude bronze. There have been, I needed to get that freestanding aspect in there because that's important. Um, there have been other statues that people made, but the deal with something being made out of bronze is that you guys have seen my art skills when we did um, the bubonic plague outbreak. Apparently, so I'm not one to talk, but apparently among artists, bronze is a very difficult medium to work with. And by freestanding, that means you can pick it up and carry it around. So this is not the first statue ever. This is not the first nude statue ever. It's not the first bronze statue ever, but it's the first freestanding nude bronze that people can pick up, walk around with. The um, Let me look up the height really fast. Okay, it's a little more than six feet tall. So you can pick this up and carry it around. If Obviously, it's going to be heavy. Most I can't do that, but a freestanding statue can be moved around or relocated. Um, so Donatello is able to do a couple of things with this. For one thing, since antiquity, no one has been able to master the arts well, and he's learning how to do something that the ancients could do. So you're improving the art skills, but also this humanism and the, the appreciation for even the human body. Um, Everyone was too ashamed of that during the Middle Ages to portray that in the visual arts. And here Donatello is saying, this is a different epoch, and we're going to do this. So he's showing 
a naked body saying it's worth being appreciated as an artistic subject. Again, there are whole sorts of things about the hat and the hair and um, why he looks a little more effeminate. But um, you've got the, the naked body there appearing f since um, for the first time since antiquity in this freestanding bronze sculpture. Um, he's also got a famous statue of Mary Magdalene that I pulled up. I didn't add a slide to it, but I just did this. This is a wooden statue. Um, Mary Magdalene was one of Jesus's female followers. Um, she um, is known in this um, sculpture for having these kind of hollow eyes, and you can just tell that she's exasperated and um, or exhausted, I should say, and um, she, someone's talking outside my office. It's distracting me. Um, she is exhausted here and um, has these penitent hands. Um, so someone who has been through a, a lot of um, difficult life experiences here and just the detail that Donatello uses um, here is very impressive um, with the, the um, hair, the eyes, the, the drapery in her clothing, and all of this done out of wood. So Donatello, the brilliant sculptor um, there. Um, then the next in our chronological order is Leonardo da Vinci. And um, da Vinci is known for doing all sorts of things, um, inventing, painting, um, his sketches. This one is probably his most Im Im important sketch at this point. It um, is called, oh, I lost my little bar. Um, do, 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 do. Hold on, I lost my bar. Annotate over desktop. Um, the uh, what's this is called Vitruvian Man. I tell you what, I am really going crazy because there are a lot of people talking in the hall outside my office. Um, Vitruvius was an ancient. Um, An architect in ancient Rome who talked about ideal perspectives. So once again, getting back to our definition from the very first um, day we covered the Renaissance, we're talking about a rebirth of the ancient world, the ideals of the ancient world. So Vitruvius was a man who would be appreciated um, and you get the idea in this image of the ideal proportions of the human body. So Leonardo da Vinci trying to honor the works of the ancients and those ideals that they had, the ideal perspective, and he's looking at mankind, and so you get the man trapped in the square in the circle. And these artists, in, I don't know if I would say enjoyed, but at least they went to the morgue on regular um on a regular basis to look at bodies and be able to turn heads and arms in certain angles, look at the movement of the veins uh, and muscles and tendons and bones so that they could accurately represent those in their works of art. Um, so not only is this just a famous sketch and looking at proportions, but also your th and, and anatomy, but also you're going back to that definition of the Renaissance and how important it was there. So he is, he does sketches. This is just one of his many um, self-portrait sketches. Um, you can see here the guy could have depicted himself with a little 
less hair on his eyebrows and a little more on top of his head, but he doesn't. He wants to be, um, to appreciate the actual appearance of the human body and find beauty in that. Um, he, let's see if I can get that screened up just a little to prove that there's no hair on top there. Um, so Leonardo using these pencil sketches, captures himself, captures other images, tries to accurately portray them as they are, as so many Renaissance uh, artists were doing. Just his inventions are um, numerous. If we just look at some of these here, um, from his sketches, kind of an early hang glider thing. He was very interested in, in wanting um, to fly or if people could, could fly. Um, um, some of his, here's one, another one of his flying machines. Um, let's see if I can find a bigger version of that. So all kinds of, um, uh, of uh, inventions here. Um, that you can look at that Leonardo had wartime innovation. So just a, a brilliant man. I don't think that that is not, okay, his, was the tennis racket. I don't know what it was supposed to say, but um, uh, just a brilliant innovator um, as well. He dabbles in painting, and you are undoubtedly familiar with his most famous work, the Mona Lisa. Um it is a, sort of a strange thing that this is his most famous work. Um, people have debated why. If you look at it closely, the, you see the, the background doesn't even match up on, on both sides. So most art historians think that um, Leonardo da Vinci would be really surprised to find out that Mona Lisa is his most famous painting. Um, some have said it's because the eyes follow you, but they do that in any painting where the subject matter is, is quote unquote, looking at the, the audience or at the viewer. So that's not it. Some have said because of the smile, there's the Mona Lisa smile movie with uh, Julia Roberts. Um, some have said she started the hand posture here. Um, I will say, let's see if I can find um, this commercial. Let's see if this works. Oh, food. No, I want to show it. I always late. My wallet. Wait. Card lock from Capital One. Instantly lock your card in case your card goes arrivederci. Mona, that smile. Technology this convenient could make history. Okay, so I do love that commercial. Um, but uh, Leonardo completes the Mona Lisa um, painting there. Um, he's famous for his fresco. So a fresco is a wall painting of the Last Supper. Um, you've probably seen things related. If you haven't seen the painting itself, heard of the, the Da Vinci Code, um, the book about this um, painting and whether this is Mary Magdalene, if Jesus was married to her, if, uh, it's the younger John, the disciple, but this is a wall painting by Leonardo. Very hard to preserve these wall frescoes. Um, there was one in, <laughs> in Spain, I think, a few years ago. Now I'm off track already. Um, where someone tried to, yeah, there it is. Um, had good intentions, but tried to restore <laughs> this fresco of Jesus, and that's how it turned out. So the before and after of this um, fresco of, of Jesus, not not so good there. Um, so Michelangelo, uh, excuse me, Leonardo, Leonardo uh, did the Mona Lisa, did his Last Supper. Uh, there's the Mona Lisa today in Paris if you go 
and see her. She is under a lot of protection and some um, very thick glass. So that's 15 minutes. We'll stop it here.